Welcome to my backyard labyrinth. This is a project that has been a year in the making. And I had no idea last April when I started it how important it would become to me during this time of pandemic. And in this video I'm going to tell you a little bit about the history of labyrinths and how I created this particular project. If you would just like to take a virtual walk on the labyrinth with me, please skip ahead to part two of this video. A very brief history of labyrinths. The labyrinth is an ancient tool that predates Christianity used for walking meditation. During the medieval time period, Labyrinths were created on the floors of cathedrals and they were used as an alternative method of pilgrimage when pilgrimage to the Holy Land could be too time-consuming, costly, and sometimes even too dangerous for most people. And so instead they would walk the labyrinth in the cathedrals. It's a tool that has enjoyed a resurgence in recent years and many outdoor labyrinths have been created. There are a variety of patterns for labyrinths from the simple to the complex. What all labyrinths have in common is there is one path in and one path out. They are different from a maze. Labyrinths are not a puzzle, they are a meditative tool. Labyrinths can be made with a variety of materials, painted on canvas and used indoors, temporarily installed outdoors using found objects such as sticks and stones, or more permanently installed in the landscape. Big or small, simple or complex, wherever you find them, they are meant to be used for the same purpose, meditation and prayer. For further information on the history and use of labyrinths, I recommend visiting the website labyrinthsociety.org. The process of creating my labyrinth. It began with a decent-sized but overgrown backyard and a desire to create a tranquil space for meditation and prayer. We dug up an old garden in the center of the lawn and pulled weeds. We put down old tarps to kill the grass and weeds underneath in a vain attempt to make it easier to dig them up later. It did seem to work best when we put down a layer of newspaper underneath the tarps first. But if I were to do it again, I think I would just rent some heavier equipment. I created a pattern on paper to guide my work. My daughter helped me map out the circle using a homemade compass of a garden stake and rope so that we would know exactly which ground needed to be prepared. As the summer progressed, so did the amount of space cleared. Some beautiful butterflies stopped by to encourage me to keep going in my work. Finally, by the end of August, the space was ready for the next phase, mapping out the path. The work began in earnest in September when I took my vacation. Following the pattern I made, I started in the center, marking the edges, laying down old newspaper, then covering it with mulch. Right in the center, I placed a mosaic paving stone my daughters and I had made years ago with a butterfly motif on it. I started marking the path with stones that had been unearthed in the process of digging up the lawn and concrete edgers from the old garden. I 
I soon discovered that it was just as easy to use mounds of dirt to mark the edges of the path, and that made more sense since my intention was to plant butterfly-attracting plants to mark the edges anyway. After that, the work progressed steadily, laying down newspaper and mulch to mark the walking path. I found some lovely butterfly garden markers made from old cutlery at our local farmer's market by an artist named Harold Brait. The final step was to do some planting and wait to see what came up in the spring. This April, some weeding was done, a little more mulch added to the path, and a few more plants added to the edging. Now we wait in great anticipation to see it bloom and to see which butterflies and birds it attracts. In the meantime, this labyrinth is fulfilling its primary purpose of being a calming, centering place to walk and pray. For a virtual walk on the labyrinth, please go to part two of the Backyard Labyrinth series, Virtual Labyrinth Walk.